Hey everybody, my name's Rich. I'm the creator of TheOldNet.com and I'm here today with an exciting holiday announcement that involves some new firmware for my uh, RS-232 serial Wi-Fi modems for DOS and Macintosh computers. And that announcement is a working TCP IP stack in DOS over Wi-Fi. What does this announcement mean to you? Well, what it means is using a cheap uh, plug and play device, you can get web browsing, IRC, FTP, in and out of your vintage DOS machine. And you don't need any complicated setup. You don't need a Raspberry Pi. I decided to put together a video for dos -ember. Now, if you already have one of these devices, what that means is today, you could start experimenting with this firmware. Let's put a link down in the description to a zip file containing uh, the firmware, a program to load it, uh, instructions on how to flash it, the DOS uh, eth serial ethernet drivers, some basic tools to get you started, and some instructions to go with that. So check the link down in the description uh, to get going. And I also include the firmware and instructions to flash it back to the uh, Hayes modem emulator as well. So how this works is it's using some firmware called ESP slip router which i found on github open sourced and i put put a link down in the description as well so i did not make this firmware i just kind of stumbled across it uh, a lot of people have been oh, i used to do a lot of people have been emailing me asking um hey do your modem support dial-up networking like ppp tcp ip and so far my answer has been no um but i'm looking into it because i do think it's possible i know the chip the esp8266 chip on this device has a PPP stack built in. Uh, so that's the direction I was looking. And then I came across a protocol called SLIP, which is the serial line interface protocol. Uh, now it is a networking protocol that predates PPP, um, but it's simpler and it's meant to run over serial. So um, for example, if you wanted to connect this system uh, to the internet, you could plug a serial cable directly into a Raspberry Pi and then create a network connection between them and out from there. And that is what I was doing for a while. I've got my Pi under my desk with a serial cable and a USB serial adapter. And uh, I was using the slip protocol on this machine to surf the internet. And then I started digging in deeper into ESP slip firmware until I found this one. And uh, lo and behold, I loaded up and it just worked. Uh, so today, I'm going to run you through the configuration for that and, uh, and show you what it's all about. Okay, let's get started setting up uh, the network connection. First thing you need to do is let's get the firmware flashed onto this device. What we're going to do, uh, I'm only providing the Windows instructions. You can do this on a Mac, you can do this on Linux, um, but you get the firmware, the bin file out of the zip file I provided. In that zip file, there's also a ESP Home Flasher exe file. That's just a simple tool uh, for flashing the bin file. You can use other tools. There's a command line tool called um, uh, esptool.py, like it's a Python tool, and you can use that cross-platform on, on any system. Anyway, we're going to open up ESP Home, plug this uh, modem in over USB uh, to your modern computer, pick the COM port, pick the bin file, and flash it, and wait till it says that it's done. After that, you're good to go, and in case it's not completely clear, this no longer works as a Hayes modem emulator. It will not work with Procom or Telex or Bananacom. It is not emulating a uh, traditional modem anymore. This is akin to emulating an ethernet device. So just keep that in mind. This is ethernet over serial, not uh, modem over serial, okay? So now we take our firmware uh, that's on our modem. We take our modem and let's plug it in uh, to the back of our system. Uh, for me, I've got this serial cable coming out the front, and let's connect some power. Takes a few seconds to boot up, uh, but it's pretty quick, and we're all done on the hardware side. This is the beauty of it. You don't have to configure a Pi or a Linux system. You don't have to do a bunch of if config stuff or TTY stuff or anything like that. Just plug it in. We're going to connect to the Wi-Fi network, and we're, we're good to go. So on DOS, on this uh, floppy disk, you are going to have to find a way to get software onto your computer. The uh, device driver, the network driver, is called ethersl.com. Uh, ethersl, SL for serial line, I presume. 
And what it needs is four arguments. It needs to know an interrupt. It needs to know an IRQ. It needs to know um, the COM port address. And it needs to know the baud rate that you want to run it at. This firmware right now by default runs at 115.200 baud. Uh, this computer is too old to run at that baud. So I actually had to connect this first to uh, connect it to my Pentium 1. Uh, and I, I reconfigured it for 57600 because uh, it just couldn't do 115200. Um, so, so keep that in mind. If you have a really old system that doesn't support the default speed that that firmware runs at, you're going to have to connect it to a newer machine and to pre-adjust it. Okay, so here we are in MTCP uh, config, and you can see that there's a bunch of hard-coded IP addresses. Most of these numbers are predetermined in the firmware. So for example, the gateway is the IP address of the Wi-Fi modem um, over serial, and it's 192.168.240.1, that's your gateway. And then the IP address of this DOS machine is 192.168.240.2. Uh, that's very important to know. It has to be those numbers. Name server, I picked 9.9.9.9, .9 .9, although I already pointed out I'm having issues doing DNS resolution at this point, so I don't think that name server is being respected. Uh, you can see I've got some other stuff here. I've got uh, FTP information for hosting an FTP server on this machine, which is pretty cool. I've got my default usernames for IRC, and I've got um, the directory for HTML files when I want to host an HTTP server on this device. So I can go ahead and exit there, uh, like I uh, was saying before, to load up the EtherSL driver. It's the second line in start.bat, EtherSL, 0x60, 4, 0x358, 76, 56, 600. Uh, this might be confusing at first, but um, honestly, just kind of just go with it and you'll be fine. 0x60 is the default interrupt um, for the, um, the Ethernet driver. 4 is the IRQ for COM port 1. 0x358 is the default memory address for COM port 1. And 57600 is the BOD uh, for the modem. Uh, we're saying that MTCP slip equals true because we are loading up the slip driver. Um, and we're saying that the MTCP config file is located in C in this case, microwave mtcp.config. And some other programs on DOS are uh, written using the watt TCP library. Uh, so I also have a watt TCP CFG, and it's it's very similar to MTCP. It just says, like, what's your gateway, what's your address, all that kind of stuff. Um, funny thing I learned doing this process, watt TCP stands for Waterloo TCP. It was created at the University of Waterloo, which is actually where I live. Pretty cool to see some stuff from you know, my hometown uh, here. Now it's time to use some programs. To start off, I'm going to issue the commands that are in start.bat. Uh, that's setting the packet driver and some environment variables. Next, I'm going to test out the network by trying to ping something uh, out in the real world. So I'm going to use ping and then I'm going to hit Google's DNS server. There you go, we're getting a response. It's great news. If you get this far, you should be in good shape. Um, after that, I'm going to uh, FTP and download a file. So I'm connecting to an FTP server on my local network. I have this folder called DOSnet that I can uh, CD into and I can download any of these files. Uh, I'm gonna get SNTP.exe. As you can see now, it's downloading. Uh, now it, do, it does take a while. It's coming down at what 56k. Uh, so you just have to be patient. But what's great is uh, okay. So we're getting uh, 5.2 kilobytes per second. So you know, like dial-up speed. But it works. It seems pretty stable, which is great. Uh, next thing I'll try and do is connect to an IRC server using IRC Junior. Let's see. Uh, and because I can't get DNS resolution working, uh, I'm going to uh, look up the IP on another computer. 
uh, first. Pretty cool, here we are connected to IRC. I'm going to connect to uh, the old net, why not? Hello from Epson Equity to... Now we can quit. Uh, the last thing I'll show is um, using the MicroWeb web browser uh, to browse my uh, service at theoldnet.com. Um, to pull up some old websites from the Internet Archive. Uh, once again, I need to do this by IP because I can't get DNS working at this point, uh, which is 15. The IP address for the old net is 159.203.14.9, and the proxy port is port 1996. So now that we've set that as an environment variable, I can launch MicroWeb. And once that's open, let's try and head over to geocities.com so that's where I used to hang out back in the 90s look at that pretty cool so here is a snapshot of geocities from 1996 being pulled up from the internet archive going through the old net uh, being um, processed there then being served up on my HTTP proxy then going over uh, Wi-Fi to the ESP uh, modem running the Ethernet uh, firmware. So pretty cool, pretty neat project all in all. So uh, yeah, anybody out there that's interested, uh, check out the zip file and the links that I've put in the description and try it out for yourself. Thanks.